Welcome back. All right, so I wasn't supposed to need the ugly hat for the New Jersey Devils. I have an ugly hat for each team, my hat collection, where if we're going to talk about losing or if they win ugly, you got the ugly hat for it. New Jersey Devils had an excellent October. They had an excellent November. They had a good start to December. I want to take a look at December. They've got one game left in December. That's tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. And, I mean, their road record is good. Their home record, not so much. But let's take a look at their month that's been thus far and how this team's kind of fallen off. Now, what's interesting is the month didn't get off to a really poor start. Uh, they lost at home against the Nashville Predators. It was an overtime loss, but it was a good game. Uh, they trailed 2-0 after 1. They led 3-2 after 2. It was a game of momentum shifts. They end up losing in overtime at 33 seconds when Johansson gets the overtime winner. So Nashville desperate for a win. New Jersey had a bunch of points. It makes some sense that the lower team gets that win in overtime. They need it more. Uh, then New Jersey goes out on the road for one game, and they win that one. They win 3-2 to two in Philadelphia. Uh, it was tied 1-1 after 2. Uh, Sedlak gets the winner at 15-12 of the third. He's gone, by the way. So he won't be getting any more winners for Philadelphia. But they got outshot 33-18 in that one. And I remember saying in the recap, this is a good sign. That New Jersey won a game they probably shouldn't have. And that, you know, they get outshot, they get out chance, but they come up with a victory. This is this is a good thing. This is a sign that they're really rounding out as a team. And then they followed that up with a 3 to nothing win at home against Chicago. Now, this is where people say, well, everybody's beating Chicago. This would be true. Uh, they did lead that one one nothing after one, and they had the 3 nothing lead after two, and they cruised from there. Vanacek gets the shutout. So everything's going well for New Jersey at this point. They're 2-0-1 in the month of December. Uh, then that homestand, which is only two games long, has a loss after that. They lose 6-4 to against the New York Islanders. Uh, they scored first, but they trailed 2-1 after one, and they trailed 5-2 to after two. Kind of a messy third period. They end up losing that one 6-4. to uh, they did. They did get outshot in that one too, 32 to 29, after outshooting Chicago 29 to 24 previously. So that's their first regulation loss. The shots are worth looking at because when New Jersey was dominating early on, their shot totals were almost doubling everybody every night, uh, swarming offense, and it it's kind of gone the other way for them lately. Uh, but they go out on the road. They go to the New York Rangers. Uh, they lose that one in overtime, four to three. Uh, they led that one 2-1 to one after 1. It was tied 3-3 after 2, and then they held on. Heedle gets the overtime winner at 2-15. So there was no scoring in the third in that one. And again, you know, I mean, it's not a fantastic record, but being 2-1-2, and two, there's worse things, especially when you're comfortably comfortably at the top of your division. Well, the, the comfort starts to go away here because uh, they lose at home against the Dallas Stars 4-1. to one. They trailed after 2 by a score of 2-1. to one. Uh, so they got they outshot the Rangers 29 to 23. They lost that one. They outshoot Dallas 36 to 32. They lost that one. And then maybe the most eye-opening of the losses, they lose at home against Philly 2 to 1. Uh, they led that one one nothing after one. They were tied one one after two. The New Jersey Devils have been very good in first periods throughout this stage, which tells me they're still a good team, but their ability to close out the games is becoming a problem. Now, with a younger roster, that's going to happen. And this is definitely a younger roster, and we'll get into the injuries and how that's playing a role too. Uh, but the reality is this is just a team that has just started going the wrong way. And I don't think they've got the veterans in that locker room that can turn that around quickly. And that's not an insult to young players. It happens. Uh, so that one was tied 1-1, and then they lose it 2-1 in the third period against Philly. Uh, then they lost at home against Florida. Florida's been having a really rough season themselves, but they came in and they beat New Jersey 4-2. to two. Uh, They trailed that one at 1-0 one after 1 and 3-1 to one after 2, and then cruised to a loss in that one. So for New Jersey in that one, uh, they outshot Florida 32-29, to 29, and that's after they outshot Philly 49-24 to 24 the game before. So what's interesting is they outshoot Philly by a lot, and they lose, and they get outshot by Philly, and they win. So sometimes the shots don't necessarily tell you who's going to win the game. Uh, and this was true as well at Carolina, where they dominated a lot of the game, but they lose 4-1. to one. They trailed 1-0 one after 1 and 3-0 after 2, but they outshot Carolina 38-20 to 20 in that game. Carolina gets an opportunity, it's in the net. Uh, they, they weren't able to get the offense that they needed, and so there you are. Uh, Kachetkov doing his magic in that one, I do believe. 
Uh, then away from home again, they win this one 4-2. to two. So a road trip, they win a game there. Uh, they have overtime loss here, win here. Their road record is still pretty good. Uh, the win at Florida, that one was tied 1-1 one, one after 1. They trailed 2-1 to one after 2. And then the comeback victory, showing how Florida's been struggling this season as well, a team that was normally pretty good in third periods. So that's a good win, and they did a get-out shot in that win as well, 36-33. to 33. I think it's interesting that in the games that they've won, two of the three they were outshot, and the other one was against Chicago, a team that struggles to get shots on net. And then their most recent two losses have both been against Boston. Now Boston, the top team in the National Hockey League, it's not that long ago we were talking about Boston and New Jersey as both being the top teams in the East. New Jersey has now dropped way off. The losses against Boston didn't help, but of course your asterisks on the board here are teams that are above the playoff line currently in the National Hockey League. Um, although the Islanders, I think, are are below, but they're not far below if they're below. And at any rate, uh, the, I, I threw an asterisk there. Sure, why not? Uh, just to show that it's it's been a, a tougher schedule for them somewhat this month. Not not impossible. So both games at home against Boston, both of them are losses. First one, 4-3. to three, That's before the Christmas break. They led that one 1-0 one after 1. They trailed 4-1 to one after 2. Last night's game, uh, was scoreless after one, and they trailed one nothing after two. So they've been able to keep Boston at bay in the first period, no problem. But they've lost the games by a combined score of seven to four, four to three in the first game, three to one in the second game. They outshoot Boston in both games, forty to twenty three in this one, and thirty one to twenty seven in this one. So if you want to say, well, the goalie steals it for Boston, okay. But they're, they're not getting those steals themselves is, is the problem right now if you're New Jersey. Their home record is 10-9-1. That's not good enough. Uh, especially when you look at that away record of 12-2-1. I've talked about the Vegas Golden Knights recently. That home and away record is not dissimilar to what the Vegas Golden Knights are sporting currently. And it's just, it's, it's not going to keep you in contention. Especially in the East where you've got a lot of teams with a really good record. So... Their upcoming schedule, uh, it, it tells you things could could get worse. I mean, you've got Friday's game, which tomorrow against Pittsburgh. Then on the first, they're at home against Carolina. They're struggling at home, and they get the Carolina Hurricanes, who are pretty good on the road. Uh, then they go to Detroit on the fourth. The next night, they're at home against St. Louis. On the seventh, they're at home against the Rangers. Uh, then they go on the road. They go to Carolina on the tenth. And then they, on the 13th, and that's a Friday the 13th, they're at Anaheim. Uh, they're at LA on the 14th, San Jose on the 16th, Seattle on the 19th. Now, this road trip, Carolina's going to be tough. They're above the playoff line, that's the asterisk. But you've got Anaheim, LA, San Jose, and Seattle. Now, LA and Seattle are both in the playoffs, but those are teams that New Jersey, if they're going to get back to where they were, if they're going to continue to contend for a top three spot in the Metro, those are teams they should beat. Uh, then they come home on the 22nd, play against Pittsburgh, 24th, 24th, they're at home against Vegas. Uh, then on the 26th and 27th, they have a game first in Nashville, and then they have a game in Dallas. And so January is going to be a bit of a tough month, uh, but they have a couple of road trips in there, and they do have the better road, road record than they have at home. The, the trick is to make sure that your, your road record doesn't start to fall apart. Uh, that the, the losses you're suffering at home don't start to trickle into those those road games. So their last 10 games, Thomas Tatar has three goals and two assists. I think he's played well, but yeah, they, they could definitely use some more scoring than what they've had lately. He's here, four goals, two assists for six points. So he's here, still developing, still getting to that next level. Zetterland, just the one assist. Uh, Howla has a goal and an assist. Howla works hard, but the, the offensive numbers always seem a little low, comparatively speaking, to the work ethic. Uh, and then you've got Hughes, five goals, five assists. Jack Hughes is a star in this league, and even through the losses that New Jersey's been suffering, he's been one of the positives. Uh, then you've got Jesper Bratt with three goals, three assists. He got off to a fantastic start. You knew he was going to slow down at some point. Sharon Govich with two goals and an assist. Boquist, no points. Mercer with two goals and an assist. He was denied, what, three times in a row last night? So he's getting opportunities, just Olmark said no to him last night. Um, Wood had a goal in their last 10 games, so one goal for Miles Wood, and McLeod with two assists. Uh, and then on the blue line, you've got Siegenthaler with five helpers. You've got Hamilton with a goal and 11 assists. You've got Kevin Ball with one assist. And then you have no points from Severson, Okochik, 
as well as from Brendan Smith because that's not really their games, right? And it shows just how many injuries these guys have on their blue line. New Jersey's a very good team. I still believe they're a very good team, but the injuries that they've suffered, definitely going to hurt their, their chances, right? And then the goaltending numbers, Vanacek over their last 10, 1-3-1, one, 886 save percentage. Blackwood, 2-1 and one with an 892 save percentage. Schmidt honestly was playing pretty well. I, I don't know if they'll consider bringing up Schmidt again and, and messing around with the goaltending a little bit. Something. They've got to do something. Uh, I think they probably stay with Vanacek and with Blackwood. But let's talk about the injuries for a second, too. So Palat, he's on the road to recovery. Non-contact jersey right now, but he's on the road to recovery. Uh, Marino and Graves are both week to week. Uh, losing Marino is tough. Marino, absolutely a warrior for the New Jersey Devils since that trade from Pittsburgh. And with him out of the lineup, that hurts them defensively especially, but on the offensive side as well. And Graves, solid top four option too. So when, you're lose, when you lose two of your top four defensemen, it forces guys up the lineup, meaning that Severson's getting more minutes than probably New Jersey fans would like to see him getting at this point. And Ball last night had, what, nine penalty minutes? I think nine, might have had 11. But at any rate, uh, Kevin Ball um, probably playing more minutes than he should right now. And then again, Okotiek, rookie, learning the game. Uh, you've got Smith, decent veteran, can play forward, can play the blue line. But again, this is not the same blue line that they had when they were rattling off all those wins early in the season. Bastion's on the injured reserve as well. And so is Jonathan Bernier. So... Before the season got started, and I was talking about the goaltending, and I talked about Bernier, and everybody kept saying, well, they say he's back in December, but it's a hip problem. And he hasn't been cleared yet. And I even looked before doing this video. I'm like, is there anything on Bernier? It's crickets. It's crickets on Bernier. Uh, the closest you can get is articles from the summer where there's concern from the Devils organization privately about whether or not he's going to play again. So... For Bernier, we'll see whether or not he ends up coming back and, and then what kind of shape he's in if he does come back. Uh, because with goaltenders, if it's a hip problem, it, it can really hinder uh, their lateral movement. And with some goaltenders, that just submarines their game, right? Uh, there are some that can overcome that. There are many that can't. So I, I, I don't know that there's a cavalry that's coming soon for New Jersey. It might very well be the fact that there's a more road-heavy um, schedule coming up in January than they've had in December. It's weird, but being at home might have hurt their chances this month, and maybe being on the road will help pick those up again. The problem is that if they win enough games on the road, then they end up being a top seed going into the playoffs, and then you have those home games to start the playoffs, and you don't play very well at home. So for New Jersey, I'm I'm not bailing on them. I'm not thinking that they're, they're not going to make the playoffs, but they have to turn this around. Uh, tomorrow, they're on the road. They're in Pittsburgh. Just relax. Uh, Pittsburgh seems to be going through a downbeat themselves. They have to make sure that they take advantage of that. And they have to make sure they get that lead in the first period. And what they do in the first period is they have to carry over. Last night, they dominated parts of that first period against Boston. And then it just it just looks like there there's that fragility to their ego. That there's just that something will go wrong. And then it just it automatically rolls the other team's way. And it can be hard to turn that around. It can be really, really hard to turn that around. But if they can get it rolling back the other direction, they could absolutely end up making it. Uh, this was a team I didn't pick to make the playoffs before the season started. Uh, but we'll see. Because I, I did take Columbus to make the playoffs. So, my bad. But yeah, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Especially if you're a Devils fan watching this. How much concern do you have? Uh, do you think that next month's schedule favors them? Um, and again, the West Coast swing could be exactly what they need because these are four teams that, while two of them again are in the playoffs, that's a winnable road trip. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, your level of concern as a Devils fan. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.